Yo, what's up guys, Insane Game Freak here. Here to bring you another anime review. Now, we've been reviewing a lot of Crunchyroll shows, so I figured, why don't we give the other companies some love? And guess what series just finished airing on Neon Alley this past weekend? And guess which series also has Blu-ray and DVDs coming out in the near future? Is it, is it this series? I think it is. This is my review for Tiger and Bunny. AKA the number one anime that needs to be on Toonami next. Just saying, just saying, shots fired. Let's go. Okay, so just to kind of quickly just throw this out here, I feel like there needs to be a campaign to get Tiger and Bunny on Toonami. I'm just saying. It's one of those shows that I think is perfect for the Western audience because it's almost blatantly geared towards the Western audience. What makes you say that? Um, the, the, the premise is about superheroes and superpowers and it doesn't even feel Japanese half the time. Yeah. I think we need to have some hashtag tiger wild roar on Toonami. Something along those lines. Actually, I'm thinking, yeah, wild roar, yeah, wild roar on Toonami. Or tiger and bunny on Toonami. Just something to tell Toonami you need to get tiger and bunny on there. We need, oh, it's for show. Sure. Anyways, moving on, getting into the actual series itself. All right, so Tiger and Bunny is pretty much, as I said before, it's, it's kind of weird. All right, look, the show, it has a show in itself. It's based in Sternbilt City. The main two characters are Tiger, a.k.a. Kotetsu Kabaragi, and Barnaby Brooks. The show in the show is called Hero TV, which essentially is a TV show out of superhero saving people and everyone has their own specific powers and in this universe the superhumans are called next you know because we all have to have a technical term for you know weird people you know like mutants and whatnot anyways the whole thing is that Tiger has been at this for a while I, I call him Tiger but Kotetsu has been at this for a while Kotetsu I think is in his late 30s and he, you know, he's he's mixed in with a whole bunch of different types of heroes and whatnot with all their different abilities. Tiger and Barnaby are quote unquote paired together partially because they both have the same power, which is the ability to be pretty much it's like a super it's like a super boost ability that super boosts like all their powers, like strength, speed, agility, whatnot. And but the thing is it only lasts for five minutes. After that, they're pretty much just normal. That's their superpower. Which in retrospect seems really lame. But the thing is that Kotetsu has been doing this for a while. Barnaby is like kind of the new kid on the block, and Barnaby is insanely younger than uh, Kotetsu. So the, the the two jokes they have against each other is that Barnaby calls Kotetsu an old man, and <laughs> and Kotetsu calls Barnaby Bunny, which really isn't meant as an insult. But that's just if you look at his robot suit that they get on, they get I think within like the first three or four episodes. His suit looks like it has bunny ears, so he's called Bunny for the segment. So, ah, ha, 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 because Kotetsu's original thing was called Wild, Ti Wild Tiger. Like, that's his uh, superhero name. Whereas Barnaby doesn't follow the same traditions as most superheroes, because Kotetsu's insanely old-fashioned. He's that type. He's like that. He's like a 90s superhero. Like, he follows that whole truth and justice fight for the people and not for the ratings and whatnot, because they're getting scored on how well they do and helping to catch the criminal. If you catch the criminal, you get more points. Kotetsu doesn't really care about that. He just likes helping people. Barnaby is the exact opposite. He cares about the points. He wants to get first in the TV show, and he's kind of has this whole sub-absorbed kind of attitude about him. It's, it's weird, and obviously you can kind of see how this is going to go, where Kotetsu kind of starts rubbing off on Barnaby throughout the first season, and then by the end of the first season, they're kind of cool, which is, you know... I'm not lying, that is a part of how it goes, but that's not how it is. But remember, Tiger and Bunny is a 26 episode, well, 25 episode series. AKA, there's a second season that deals with a lot of extra stuff. To me personally, the second season is so good compared to the first season. The first season just spends all its time introducing the characters and doing the stereotypical, I'm going to, you know, gradually warm up to you, Kotetsu, and then we're going to become bros because. For whatever reason, Barnaby actually has a quote unquote tragic past. I say quote unquote. I'm just going to say this right now, for the English dub, Barnaby is voiced by Sasuke's voice actor, which if you're a Naruto fan and you watch the Naruto English dub, you know who Sasuke is voiced by. I'm just going to say this as a side note, why is it like every character this, this Sasuke's voice actor ever acts, and I'll probably have his name in some type of annotation, 
because I don't know his name off the top of my head. Why is it like every character he 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 vo voice acts seems to have some type of tragic mental trauma? Like he voices Seabon from Gurren Lagann, he voices Barnaby, and he voices Sasuke. All three of those characters have like serious mental issues during a certain point in the series. Sasuke and Barnaby probably being the major extreme. Sasuke being the ridiculous extreme. Barnaby's kind of like a middle ground, but that's just say. You're going to see the same flashback a while, and you'll know which flashback it is, because you'll see it, like, twice in the same episode. But the, the, the thing I like about it is it's not only the superhero gimmick, but just the dynamic of all the characters. Because you not only have those, but you have, like, these other superheroes, like Blue Rose, Origami Cyclone, Rock Bison, I believe his name is Firebrand, um, Sky High, uh, oh, what's her name, Dragon Kid, am I missing anyone? No, I think that's it, and they all have their certain quir quirks, like, for example, Origami Cyclone has that whole gimmick where in the beginning of the series, he has this whole thing where, he, he his, his power is kind of lame, but that's just, put it this way, his whole goal throughout the beginning of the series was just to get into shots, so his brands, because they're all being sponsored by different companies, like, you'll see the Bandai logo, and like, Tokyo Pop, and stuff like that, all over these characters, like, suits and whatnot, and like, Origami Cyclone's goal is to like, show off that so he's like doing the sponsorship part right uh blue rose sponsors pepsi he even has on the pepsi thing in like the opening and like when she drinks it next cola you know obviously next pepsi you know obviously playing off the next thing you know i like that kind of stuff i like the whole attention to detail i like how each character has their own quirks and their abilities are pretty cool like you have the five minute power boost that tiger and barnaby have you have the uh, ability the shape shift you have the ability Ice powers, I believe, is what Blue Rose has. It's just like ice powers. The only disappointing thing is that you don't really go through every character's powers. For example, you don't know what Rock Bison's power is at the end of the series because he's one of those characters that doesn't do much. Like, you know, Dragon Kid has electrical abilities. You know, Sky High has um, wind powers. And they all have like their own quirks. Like, for example, Firebrand is like this. He, he's like this. He's the only black character, but once again, he's that. Well, technically, you could say Kotetsu is black, but that's the point. It's not even important. You could say, like, like, Firebrand has, is, like, kind of gay. Like, he has pink hair, wears lipstick, he has a kind of a transvestite voice. Also, he likes to hit on Kotetsu a lot. It's kind of awkward. I know. We just don't get no love in anime. It's besides the point. You know, they all have their quirks. Like, Scott High, for some weird reason, his quirk is this whole, him saying the same thing twice. Like, he'll be like... This is, the, this is the best catchphrase. Actually, I would have just be like, thanks and thanks again. I swear to God, if they ever put Tiger Bunny on Tsunami, the, everyone's response should be, thanks and thanks again. Because it's, 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 it's such a stupid phrase, but it's so catchy because everyone knows it now. Because that, that's what he does. He just goes, thanks and thanks again. It's ridiculous. I like the dynamic between the characters. I like the growth between Barnaby and Tiger. Both of the characters are growing equally, having their own issues to deal with. Like, the first season is more focused on Barnaby, whereas the second season is more focused on Tiger. And the ending was enjoyable. I just liked the kid. The kid it was so much fun. It was just so much fun to watch. I know you can make the claim that the first half of the series is kind of cliched because the first half is pretty much like a, a buddy superhero movie where you're growing to get to know both of the characters while they're getting to know each other and whatnot. But it's just like the first... It's just... Just because it's cliche doesn't make it bad, and you have so much fun watching the characters interact anyway, while also at the same time being introduced to other characters, because they don't spend the first season purely on Barnaby and Tiger. They're kind of showing Kotetsu's merits as we're being introduced to these side characters. Like, Origami Cyclone has his own specific episode, Dragon Kid has his own specific episode, uh, Blue Rose has her own specific episode. Almost all the characters get their own specific episodes, or get important roles in the series and that's what I like I like that they share the spotlight like they're supposed to so at the end of the day Tiger and Bunny is a totally as a show made for Western audiences it needs to be on Toonami I think it would do well uh, it needs to be watched period the first blu-ray DVD set is out that has the first 13 episodes on it go cop this the second one I think comes out in May yeah, the second one comes out in May, which by the time you're watching this, it may have already come out. Anyways, I believe, I believe this has like the first episode of English dubbed on their channel. So I'll link that, and then I'll probably link Neon Alley where you can watch it, which they're probably gonna do reruns of it because, I mean, it's all. This is the first time it's been shown all the way through, and 
until other things pop in, like I don't know, <coughs> Excel World. Um, <laughs> we, we need other things to watch because a lot of shows are wrapping up right now. Anyways, uh, go check it out. Go support the releases. Uh, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below about the series. I love Tiger Bunny. That's just me. I love this series. That is just ah. Uh, and this ah, uh, I got this is finally getting back into the dubbing game. I like the dub. Just ah, uh, I hope they dub the movie too. Anyways. This has been the Insane Game Freak. Give you another anime review. Leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Life's a game. Play to win. And I'll catch you guys later. I think it's time we let out a wild roar. Which is funny because I don't think he actually roars after that. I think he just goes, ah! And, then it, <laughs> and that is your wild roar, Tiger. Anyways. Peace off.